Two competing rulings by federal judges could see the Supreme Court take up another abortion case. On Friday, a Texas judge effectively banned the use of an abortion pill that has been dispensed safely for more than 20 years. The judge gave the government seven days to appeal. At the same time, a judge in Washington state ruled that 17 states and Washington, D.C., can still legally dispense the drug. Let's bring in right now the assistant of the president, director of the White House Gender Policy Council, Jennifer Klein. Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us. Of course, yeah, we're, we're hearing from Democrats what the administration should do and others. They should ignore the rulings and move forward. They should fight the rulings. What's the president's position? So first of all, we disagree strenuously with this, uh, this decision. A court in Texas has taken which it, what is virtually an unprecedented step, maybe literally unprecedented step, to um, reject FDA's approval of a medication which, as you just said, has been on the market safely and uh, available for, for women for decades, for over 20 years. Um, so first and foremost, we are fighting this uh, decision in court. Um, and it's important to note that the decision is stayed for, for seven days, um, which uh, means that nothing has changed and that mifepristone, the, the drug in question, is available um, as it was before the, the judge issued this decision on Friday evening. Um, and what we are going to do is, and the Department of Justice has already done, is filed a notice of appeal. We will appeal this mm -hmm. case and we um, believe that we will win and, um, and this decision, which would uh, effectively ban abortion nationwide will not stand. So is this, um, do you think that the consequence that many were worried about of Roe being overturned and the question is what's next and what else do you think the White House can do? Well, you know, this is exactly what the Supreme Court um, said should not happen after Dobbs. You know, agree mm -hmm. or disagree with the Dobbs decision, which obviously I, I uh, disagree with. Um, what the what the uh, Supreme Court said in that case was that um, states should decide. And what's happened here is that one judge, um, you know, the the plaintiffs in this case. Um, were is, is literally an organization that was formed after Dobbs to bring this case in Amarillo, Texas, where there is only one judge. So they had a hundred percent a chance of getting this judge um, to do what effectively they've been trying to do for decades, which is ban abortion nationwide. Have you? Uh, this is Al Sharpton. Have you uh, in the White House? thought about reaching out to those that may have been uh, pro-life but now are saying that these rulings go too far and therefore expand the base of support you could get against uh, uh, reproductive rights of women because I'm hearing from fellow clergymen that are pro-life saying, wait a minute, this is a bridge too far. I think that's exactly right, and that's really what we've seen across the country. I mean, you saw five ballot initiatives which spoke loudly and clearly. Just recently, this past uh, last week in Wisconsin, you saw what happened in that Supreme Court election. You know, this is an issue which has strong popular support among all people, Republicans, Democrats, and independents. You know, three quarters of Americans feel that uh, women should have the right to choose. Um, government should not stand in the way to make that choice. And by the way, this particular form of uh, abortion is particularly popular. Um, you know, two thirds of people uh, believe that uh, people should have access to medication abortion. All right, Director of the White House Gender Policy Council, Jennifer Klein, thank you so much. Let's bring in. Thank